The sheer delight of Little Big Planet is that it's forever expanding into the uncharted reaches of the Imagisphere. There is always something new to do, learn and improve upon. Never let this be a daunting thing. You are one of our flagship creators. Explore, try stuff, faff around with it all. You can't break it, for goodness sake. Think of these tutorials as the spring in your step, which will in turn become a bound, then a mighty leap into new and exciting adventures. Oh, we do love you up here, you know. Whether you want to perform the entire works of Billy Shakespeare through interpretive dance or just give a cheeky smile now and again, you need to know how to animate your sack boy. The directional buttons are your emotional coordinators, so let's have a faff with them, shall we? Press up to make him smile like he's just been given a box of chockies. Press down to make him sad as it's empty. Press left to make him scared as the box is ticking. Press right to make him angry as it was his own wristwatch he was hearing. Use the limb buttons and sticks to move his arms, and if you tilt the controller, his bonds will move about. There you have it, your very own sack puppet. Always warm your hands before operating him, though. Just a reminder about your style files in the poppet. Select characters to spruce up your sack boy in a variety of differing materials and accessories. The next page button is your virtual window shopping tool. Follow the latest carting fashions or set some new ones. Pressing the action button applies the outfit. Not sure whether something goes with your current mood? Try the randomize feature. There's a wash facility to strip back your sack body to nutty mode so you can start again. And what about your trolley, your wheels, your ride? It needs some individualizing too. Open Pop It and select Cart. It's a veritable cart sales room of vehicular choices. Put a deposit down on one with the action button. And the options aren't just cosmetic, oh no, sir. Press next page to view the specs on offer. Body kits, customized wheels, heated seats, whatever you want. Select away, and once you're done, close Peter Poppet, and there's your jalopy. Rotate allows you a good look round it to metaphorically kick the tires. If you're happy, let's boogie. Up here, we love to make all things bright and colourful, and if they already are, we make them doubly so with stickers. You can place them anywhere, in your pod, in levels, on objects, even on your own sack bottom if the whimsy takes you. To place a sticker, open your poppet and select Stickers and Decorations. Find one that has a jib you like the cut of and select it with the Action button. The right stick allows you to rotate it via the miracle of left and right, while the impossibly useful up and down allows the sticker to be scaled. Once you're happy with the dimensions, find a suitable location and place it with the action button. Now, decorations are totally different to stickers in so much as they have a different name, but apart from that, they're identical. Select, change, and place them like you would a sticker. They're on the next page. You can alter your already placed sticks and decks with the edit tool. Highlight it, move it with the action button, or just send it packing back into the Imagisphere for recycling with the delete button. Marvellous. In the level editor, you experience hover mode. This is movement in 3D space and is awesome. Use the left stick to do so. 
to lift yourself up, use the R2 button. The L2 button brings you smoothly down again. Try rotating the camera in the level editor by using left and right on the right stick. That's pretty neat too. Zooming in and out is done with the right stick. Zoom in with the up, zoom out with the down. If you want to tilt the camera to change its angle, hold the L3 button and then move the camera around with the right stick. Cool, isn't it? You certainly know how to look after your sack self. Let's push your gladiatorial skills to the limit in... The Arena of Susan. I didn't want to say arena of combat or fighting or something too tough. Let's keep things nice, like my cat, Susan. To create your very own arena, go to Your Moon, select a suitably creative crater and press the action button. Peruse the themes available and pick one that takes your fancy. In the level, Open up the old poppet and select Create Track and Arena with the Action button. Select Create Arena and Action That. Some interesting shapes available, so have a think, have a choose, have a press of the Action button. Spawn points are automatically installed so all the carts can make impressive entrances. Incidentally, if the border of your arena isn't quite right or is geometrically displeasing to you, alter it. Paint the border area by holding down the action button and moving your brush where you want your changes to sit. Our old chum Donny Delete button is always there to take away any mistakes or bits you don't need. Accoutrements in the shape of weapon pickups, stickers, decorations, or whatever else you think your arena needs can be added whenever you wish. Okay, let's have a little test of the track, shall we? See if it's suitably tracky. That's technical talk for good grip, the right amount of curves, corners, and hills, and above all, does it make that deliciously, audibly pleasing screech when you burn the bends? Important factors. So, keep pressing the close button until your poppet is gone. Then press down on the directional buttons. Now make room for the old vroom vroom, because you are now driving me, old sackboy racer. Have a spin, get the feel of the road, and when you want to get back to where you were, press on the directional buttons. Or, how about a test race? We cartheads usually get to know a track best when we're in a race, so press the start button to bring up the pause menu. Select change to play mode. Three, two, one, ready, teddy, go! Blast off, you're racing! You can return to your editing business by selecting change to create mode. Ordinarily, I leave the decorating to Susan, although she's never quite 100% happy with the outcome, but that's pernickety cats for you. In Little Big Planet, everyone will want to exercise their own exquisite taste in decor, because it's all done in 3D. Select stickers and decorations with the action button in your pocket. Peruse the wonderful stickers on offer with the directional buttons or left stick if that's more comfortable. Use the L1 and R1 buttons to browse different pages because on the second page are the decorations. Makes you want to put one hand on your hip, one over your mouth and gasp the words, Oh my giddy aunt, that is gorge, doesn't it? Me too. Select one with the action button and place it in your level. The perfection doesn't end there. You resize stickers and decorations by pressing the up or down directional buttons and rotate them by using the left and right directional buttons. Make them rise and fall into position with L2 and R2. And if you think it's just right, then immediately change your mind, like a certain fussy feline I know, simply delete it with the delete button and start again. We all like to make and do. 
and you can't get any more makier or dewier than in Little Big Planet. We call the things we create custom objects, and materials are the solidified primordial soup they are made from. You collect materials as you gad about the Imagisphere, and they're automatically saved in your goodies bag. Open your poppet and go to the materials page. OK, choose a shape and let's have a faff about with it, shall we? The directional buttons allow you to rescale and rotate the shape, which is handy. You draw by holding down the action button. The back button allows you to choose a different sized brush, whilst the delete button is the tool to make holes or chip away bits you're not fond of. If you click down the left stick and hold it there, then press the thickness button, it will increase the thickness. But couple old lefty with the thinness button and you can make it thinner. If only waistlines were so user-friendly. Once you are happy, press the back button to return to your poppet. If in the future you fancy further tweaking, highlight the object with the poppet cursor and press the tweak button for the tweak menus. Then do what thou wilt with the edit and action buttons, you gorgeous little perfectionist, you. A sack boy should always know where his tools bag is. That'd look awesome on a t-shirt because it's so flipping well true. The tools bag is always in your poppet, and in it are the trappings to make your levels ebb and flow with the tides of your amazing imagination. The tools, gadgets, gameplay kit, sounds and music will add animation and mild peril to your creations. The group tool, for example, allows you to join objects together for easier editing or perfectionist faffing. It's in the tools bag. Situate the cursor over items you wish to group together and press the selection button to add it to the object group. Objects become highlighted once selected so you know exactly which ones you're faffing with. If you think you have the entire group selected, press the action button. And there you have it. You've formed a group. Now they will move in unison. Very handy. The Capture Object tool allows you to save your creations so you can play with them at a later date or share with your fellow Little Big Planitians. Select the Capture Object tool from the poppet, choose the object you want to save, then press the Action button. There, saved for future delight in the My Objects page of your goodies bag. So you want to change the world. Hmm. It's somewhat tricky down there, but up here in the Imagisphere, it's easier than changing your Easy Peel Velcro trousers. Sculpt, mould and terraform your level's terrain so it's exactly the world you want it to be, simply by selecting Terrain Edit in your poppet. You can literally paint your world into being with a virtual brush. There's a number to choose from. Let's select one of the Terrain Sculpt brushes with the Action button. Allow your left stick to channel your creativity into the brush and the directional buttons to rotate or resize it. The R2 and L2 buttons allow for upward and downward strokes. Maybe you'd like to pick a different material to work with from the Edit Terrain menu. Have a browse and pick the material you think best fits your scene. Like the sculpting brush, you hold down the action button where you want the new material to be applied. Ah, I can sense you're going to be a grand master at this. I have a kitchen that needs decorating if you're up for it. Cash in hand. By installing control points in your track, you can exert optimum control over your track's twisty, turny topography. To begin, select the Add or Remove Control Points tool from the poppet. This enables you to add or delete points along the track by using up and down with the left stick, then pressing the Add or Delete button. So, if you wanted to, I don't know, add a fiendish fork in the road, 
Select the Branches tool in the Edit Track and Arena menu. Move along the track with the left stick. A helpful little flag appears, showing where the beginning of your branch will begin. If you're happy with the spot, press the Place Branch button. You can change which side of your track the branch starts at by pressing the Change Track Edge button, so it works for drivers from any country, even Italy. Once you've placed the start flag for your branch, move along the track to where you want your branch to rejoin the track. Press the Place Branch button again to create the second path. Now, breadcrumbs. No, we're not sticking them to the window to make the birds knock themselves out like my Susan does. These are a different type of breadcrumbs. These breadcrumbs create alternate paths along your track and are best used for small distances and tight curves where branches don't do much. We've included a number of optional extras in the cards for your amusement, so some other extras have had to go. Nothing major. The air freshener shaped like a tree, the floor mats and the, um, airbags. But just look at what we've added. A jet pack. It's like giving your cart an atomic five a day, all in one go and chucking it off a cliff. You can put a jetpack on your track somewhere for use in a race. They're in the gameplay kit section of your poppet. Drive over it during a race and the word zoom suddenly has several thousand letter O's added to it. Until the fuel runs out, that is. There's also a bounce pad extra to be played with. This allows your car to bounce like a healthy young kangaroo the same distance each time you use it. Very handy. This is also in the gameplay kit section of the poppet and should be placed on the track to be used when you run over it. Alter its settings in the tweak menu first to get it just how you want it. Height and angle, for example, you'll always bounce in the direction your cart is facing. Worth bearing in mind that. Another cool extra is the launch pad. When triggered, it sends you and your trolley flying through the air, but lands you in the same place every time. Again, it's in the gameplay kit section of Pop It, and you should tweak it to adjust the distance and height of your mighty bound. Good stuff. See how we think of you. I'd like to say use these devices wisely. But where would the fun in that be? Little Big Planet cards come with a dazzling array of semi-harmless weaponry as standard. But did you know you can turn just about any object you come across into a weapon too? The sillier the better, as this is Little Big Planet and fun and frolics are much in evidence. How about a heat-seeking monkey weapon? A heat-seeking monkey with a rainbow coming out of its bottom. Oh, imagine that in your arsenal. To make one, simply put a weaponizer on a monkey and save it to My Objects. Next, load the monkey into a weapon pickup and it's primed for action. There's four different weaponizers to make use of, so just let your imagination go loopy-loo, why don't you? The deliciously informative Little Big Planet Gadget Spotter's Guide lists five different types of motor. It says motors available are the piston, the hinge, the rotate motor, the look-at motor and the path follower motor. Ooh. They're ideal for attaching to objects you'd like to set in motion and can be gawped at in the gadgets page of the tools bag in the poppet. We really should check them out while we're here, folks. Let's see what the piston motor does. The book says the piston moves an object in a straight line. Once you place the piston in your level, you will be able to see a preview of its movement path. Hmm. 
Hey, let's attach a piston to this sardine can to make it into a stomper. We'll first need to rotate it so that it moves vertically instead of horizontally. Select the piston with the poppet cursor and use the 3D rotate option. Rotate the piston so that its movement path points up. Now select its connector with the poppet cursor and select the sardine can. Press the action button to confirm and a rod will appear between the object and the motor indicating the connection is successful. To adjust the piston's power and distance, press the menu button to open up the tweak menu. Lots to play with here, such as the amount of time it takes to complete its movement, the length of its path, or whether or not it pauses once it's reached the end of its trajectory. Hey, the guide also says you can hook up multiple objects to one motor. We could have an entire school of stomper sardine cans. I don't know what we'd teach them, though. If you'd like an object to swing back and forth, then we recommend a hinge motor. A nice set of opening and closing gates, for example. Select the hinge from the tools bag in the poppet and then attach it to this fence. Think on, though, an object's pivot, i.e. the point at which it rotates, relies completely on where you place the hinge motor. For instance, if you place the hinge in the middle of this fence, it will swing back and forth from its centre. If you place the hinge at one of its ends, then the fence will open and close in a big arc, rather like my garden gate before it was stolen. I'm sure someone fenced it. You adjust the angle of a hinge, its arc, and its speed in the tweak menu. You can also decide whether or not it pauses, and which direction it moves in, clockwise, counterclockwise. The list is ended. So, what do rotate motors do, I hear you ask? Well, they rotate, strange as it seems, and will do the same to any objects they're attached to. Your mind is spinning with the possibilities right now, isn't it? Select the rotate motor from the tools bag in the poppet and attach it to Mr. Garstang Tweddle's bow tie. He's a penguin and my friend. The rotate motor's placement determines the point from which the object will rotate. Place the motor right in the middle of the bow tie and it will spin around its centre. He'll like that. Very centred chap is Mr Garstang Tweddle. You can adjust the rotate motor's speed and direction in which it spins by opening up its tweak menu. <laughs> or, or beak menu in Mr Garstang Tweddle's case. He's, he's a bird, you see. Well, well you, you had to be there. Let's take a look at the look-at motor. It rotates the object it's attached to so that it is always pointing at a specific target. Clever, eh? This arrow, for example. To make it point at you, open the tools bag from the poppet and select a look-at motor on the gadgets page, just there. You can tell which direction the object will look by looking at the direction the motor arrow points. Also, the placement of the look-at motor determines the point at which the object will rotate. Important stuff! Attach the motor to the geopaint arrow and rotate the motor using the directional buttons. Ensure the motor's arrow points in the same direction as the geopaint arrow. Next, move the arrow so that the look-at motor sits right in the middle of it. OK, so now when you drive up to the arrow, it'll point at you and you'll know it's definitely you driving. Are you a highly motivated person? If not, you could always fit yourself with a path follower motor. They aren't backwards at coming forwards, I can tell you. They can even get a favourite object moving along your track if you want them to. They're found in the gadgets page of the tools bag. But you'd need to create a path for it to go round first. The draw spline tool does this for you, and that's on the first page of your tools bag. 
to bring the path into existence, simply hold down the draw spline button and move the cursor. Magically, the path appears. Release it when you're done. There's an edit spline tool too, so you can perfect your path by putting points where you please, or indeed deleting them if the whimsy so takes you. OK, so when you're crazy about your paving, it's time to place the path follower motor. The motor will automatically attach itself to the spline like a geek to a rare comic book. The next thing is to get that motor attached to the object you want motivating. To ensure everything's working correctly, we've installed a test drive mode, so you can see it moving. Nifty, eh? A word to the wise. Only ever say nice things about censors. They can't take criticism and are prone to hissy fits. They're very sensitive. <coughs> um, sensors are brilliant. We love sensors up here in Little Big Planet. They're so useful because if the conditions to which they are tweaked are met, they operate stuff. Wow! They live in the gadgets page of the tools bag in the poppet, which is an amazingly cool place to be right now. Let's start off with the pressure sensor, which is a pretty darn fine bit of kit as it happens. It detects whether or not a cart is on top of it, like a button, and sends out a signal when pressed. To set it, open your poppet and in the object tweaker section, choose danger tweaker. This will set an object on fire when you test drive, which is handy. Attach a button to the input of the danger tweaker and it will only fire up when the button is pressed. Not just fire, it can be tweaked to become visually pleasing illumination or plasma. Gas even. Fun with pyrotechnics. Just don't tell Mum. Careful though, when active, the object is dangerous. Don't drive into it. Let someone else do it and enjoy the show. We intended to put some parking sensors on your cart for you, but we weren't clever enough. So we made them into impact and weapon sensors for use on objects instead. Impact sensors can be added to an object to send out a signal when something has collided with it. We put them in your poppet on the sensors shelf. Also in your poppet, on the sensors shelf, is the aforementioned weapon sensor, which acts like a counter and records how many times your object has been hit. Might come in useful if you're in competition with someone and you want a full roundup of the final scores. You can change its target counter in the tweak menu, so if you and your chum agree on a certain amount of hits, once this is reached, the gadget sends out a signal saying so. Parking sensors would have been nice, but then again, we don't have any car parks in Little Big Planet, so they'd have been a bit rubbish too. If you want to add a touch of magic to your level, then emitters are the permitters of such a thing. They allow you to spawn objects into your scene out of nowhere, so you can dazzle and impress even the most hard-to-please visitors. They're found in the Tools Bag menu of the Poppet under Gadgets. Once you've placed an emitter into your level, open its Tweak menu to give it something to emit. You might want it to produce a pre-made prop or one of your own objects. You can select where the object is spawned too, which is quite handy. You don't want to spawn a neon flashing no entry sign in the middle of your track, now do you? What good would that do? None. You can also set the speed at which the object is spawned. If it's a spinny something or other, set the frequency of its spinniness. The lifetime tweak sets how long the object will exist, and the maximum tweak sets how many objects in total will be created. There's a preview facility to show what it'll look like in your game, so you can get it looking just so before going live. 
But, you know, the emitter isn't just for gifts. You can set it to add unwanted surprises, too. How about turning into a fun gun, a turret of trouble to make your visitors sit up in their carts and grip their steering wheels with white-knuckle expectation? Set the weapon platform tweak to on, and then designate a weapon. Oh, before I forget, the FX emitter is a specialised kind of emitter that creates particle effects. Its tweak menu gives you a selection of particles it can generate. You could alter the particle colours, too, and the angle and speed of emission. It's all amazingly visually pleasing, I can tell you. Can we make you aware of some devices in the advanced logic section of Peter Poppet? Toggles are simple yet delightfully useful tools. Each time it gets a new input, it toggles, it changes. So, for example, put one on a button and a light. Connect the button to the input and the output to the light. When it receives an input, the light goes on. If it receives another one, the light goes off. Handy. Even handier, a selector. You can change the number of inputs and outputs in the tweak menu. So try connecting the three buttons to each of the selector's inputs. Now connect the outputs to the three lights. Stay with me. In effect, it will always have only one output active at any one time. Only the output closest to the end of the selector will be active if multiple inputs are active. Hope I'm not uh, baffling you with science here. If I am, just nod and keep your mouth shut. Works for me. Ooh, the selector also has a cycle input. Just connect the button to the cycle input, and every time it's activated, it moves along to the next one. Yeah, OK, you can stop nodding now. You look like a toy dog in the back of someone's car. To show you the amazingly useful properties of a randomizer, I've invited my friends the famous variety act, the Bow Tie Pengi Wengi Woos. Their bow ties are on rotate motors, making them go around and around. Amazing, I know, but let's add some variety to their act. We'll add a randomizer, which can be found in the advanced logic section of the poppet. Connect the output of the randomizer to the inputs of the motors. Now tweak the randomizer by changing the on and off times to affect how fast it changes. If you set input action to override, you can use an input, that button for this job, to determine when it picks a new output. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the bow tie pengi wengi woos. Look, their bow ties go around. Oh, good grief, these TV talent shows have a lot to answer for. So, are your customers happy with the service you've provided? Are the little big planitions gadding around your racetrack getting the full racing experience? One way to keep an eye on them, well, two really, are sensors. There's two types. The race position sensor and the progress sensor track how the carters are doing in your level. If they stay for the full course, you must have done something right, right? Both can be found in the tools bag and should be placed on the spawn point of the cart you wish to track. The race position sensor sends out a signal based on the cart's current standing in the race. This sensor sends out a signal which is, in effect, a percentage based on the racer's place. So, if your race has four players, the leader will send out a signal at 100%. Second place will send out a signal at 66%. Third will be 33%. And last place will be 0%. Does that make sense? The progress sensor detects how close a contestant is to completing a race. So, if your race has two laps, when the first one is done, it'll send out a signal of 50%. 
race position sensors and progress sensors can both be used in conjunction with a threshold advanced logic gadget. Very similar to a counter, this thing, as it keeps track of input. But in this case, the threshold sends out a signal when its input is within a certain set of values. This makes it ideal for race position sensors and progress sensors. Sensors. It's senseless not to use them. Amongst the myriad tools on offer to help you make your levels are the speed, reset and score sensors. The speed sensor tracks the speed of the object to which it is connected. You can set its target speed. That's the point at which it sends out a signal. Or you might want to hook it up to a motor and use the motor's speed scale input action to run the motor at the same speed as the sensor's object. The reset sensor tracks whether the cart it's attached to has been reset. Use the tweak menu to pick what sort of reset you want tracked. Choose from any, out of bounds, weapons, hazard, manual, that's resetting yourself, or water. If you want to know whether a certain score has been reached, then we present you with the score sensor. Set it to whether the sensor keeps track of all the player's scores or just a certain team's score. Once the target score has been reached, it sends out a signal. Then you might want to organize a lavish prize-giving ceremony or just give a firm, gentlemanly handshake. If you want to, you can really get stuck into all the technical computer wizardry of Little Big Planet. But where do you put all that imagispherial creative logic once you've mastered it? A microchip would be handy. There is one in the advanced logic gadgets of your tools bag by Jingo, so let's play with it. You can place the microchip on any object, including spawn points. There are no outputs on a microchip initially, but it does have one power input, a changeable facility depending on what you place inside your chip. To place logic and other gadgets inside the chip, you first need to open its circuit board. Highlight the microchip with the component cursor and then press the expand button and you're in. Roomy, isn't it? A very welcoming grid is now ready to instantly receive any gadget you wish to add, but it will then behave as though it was attached to the object the microchip is on. So, like the physics tweaker, for example, it'll use the microchip's position as the gadget directly affects the object. This is a good thing, as you can use the microchip's power input to trigger the gadgets and other logic that it contains. If it's not wired up, it'll be just on as a matter of course. Little Big Planet carts now come with controlinators and cartinators fitted as standard. The controlinator allows you to control objects in your level by use of the controller buttons. Motors, lights, sounds, gadgets you created, even your stereo. Attach a controlinator to multiple music objects to make your own LBPK jukebox. Music to race to. The cartonator lets you customize how your cart is controlled, so you can put what bells and whistles you use most in closest proximity. We advise disconnecting this facility if you're worried other players might alter your settings. Like when someone moves your seat position. <laughs> Ooh, now that is beyond human endurance, isn't it? And if you want to know what the controlinator and cartinator can do when you combine both wonderful devices, then you can find out for yourself by faffing around with it. Sadly, there's still no cup holders as standard in your carts, but one day, one day... Like the mind-blowingly useful microchip, the sequencer allows you to organize logic and other gadgets. The difference being the sequencer works to a timeline so you can control the order of events. 
Very handy for cut scenes and advanced AI. Once you place the sequencer in the level, you can access its circuit board by pressing the expand button. Remember, it's a timeline, so logic and other gadgets placed will trigger in sequence, so the correct order of placement is very important. Preview your sequencer's events by clicking up on the directional buttons or by entering test drive mode, just to make sure you've got it 100% A-OK. -okay. The sequencer has one power input that turns the entire sequence on. Logic and gadgets placed inside the sequencer will activate as the sequencer's playhead passes over them. Not logic gates, though. Gadgets placed on the sequencer's circuit board can be stretched to increase the duration of their effects, which is a nifty idea. Also, why not adjust the size of the sequencer's circuit board by opening up the board's tweak menu? Might be fun. Alter the duration of each stripe or segment. And do you want the sequencer to loop or not? And if so, in which direction? So much choice! So much to play with! So get on with it! Up here, we don't have your internet. We have the Imagisnet. It's a natural cerebral communications field that encompasses all of Little Big Planet. You can access it to send messages via transmitters and receivers, which are located on the gadgets page of the tools bag. The transmitter is the advanced logic responsible for sending out the signal. It has one input and must receive a signal from that input before it can transmit its own. In Little Big Planet, we use colours as channels. It's our arty nature. You can set which colour channel the transmitter transmits on. Receivers will only respond to signals that are on the correct colour channel. Receivers have one output, which can be attached to other gadgets to trigger them once a signal is received. In the receiver's tweak menu, there's the option to set the channel for the signal, the number of transmitter signals required to activate the receiver, and the activation type. These are last activated, highest and lowest. This determines which signal the receiver responds to if there are multiple signals being transmitted. Every succulent inch of Little Big Planet is an Imagisnet hotspot. It's free, it's faster than the speed of thought, and it's all yours. Your levels are alive. Kind of. They have a unique artificial intelligence that you can tinker with. The cart brain tweakers that you place on the spawn points are found with the cart tweakers in the tools bag. For example, the race brain allows you to customize the racer AI. General behaviors are race, reset, stop idle, block chase, and race to position. Why not also have a tinker with specific characteristics like targeting, aiming, and drifting? Go mad! You can't break it. The arena's AI is governed by the battle brain. A variety of general behaviours are on offer here, too, such as basic battle to defending or fleeing. Again, there are specific behaviours to play with, like go to checkpoint or target lead player. You can tweak individual characteristics for more in-depth behavioural patterns. There's also an actor brain, which is a contradiction in terms, this brain allows you to isolate specific behaviours to create advanced AI behaviour sets. Dashed useful in a cutscene, too. Behaviours to choose from are reset, stop idle, jump and follow spline. Remember, brains for race, battle and actor just have one input and one output only, but this will allow you to trigger the specific behaviour you have set, or indeed trigger something else you've cooked up. Surprise us. Oh, before I forget, dash this faulty actor brain of mine, I must mention the Pathfinder Object Tweaker. 
It tells the AI if something is drivable or an obstacle or should be utterly ignored completely. Place it on a moving object that is actually drivable or could be considered an obstacle. You set which type in the Pathfinder's tweak menu. Sometimes you want to beef up your trolley. Upgrade your vehicle, man. Customize your cart. So you're going to need cart tweakers in your levels. They're in the gadgets page of the tools bag and must be placed on spawn points to become effective. But not cockpit and chassis tweakers. More of those lads in a minimo. The handling tweaker allows you to adjust how your cart drives. The feel of your wheels, dude, as the kids never say. Couple of modes to choose from here. There's normal cart, tank controls and autopilot. Direct control controls the cart's movement purely with the left stick. You can also tweak a number of parameters for reach control mode, like top speed and acceleration. The power-up loadout and weapon loadout tweakers permit you to outfit carts with special abilities and pickups. How about a grapple hook or grabinator? The power-up loadout gives you those. Or, if you want to be armed to the teeth, visit the arsenal that is the weapon loadout. Use it responsibly, though. That means no witnesses. Need a bigger cart? Or maybe something a tad smaller for precise handling. You can adjust the scale of your cart with the aptly named Cart Scale Tweaker. All of these tweakers have a power input that allows you to turn them on or off as you please. If they're not wired up, they'll automatically be on. If you'd like to control either the outcome of your game or the physical properties of the level, then might we recommend World Tweakers. Being gadgets, we've put them on your gadgets page. The Game Ender Tweaker forwards the game to the scoring phase when it receives a signal. Depending on whether you set its parameter to success or failure determines whether players are sent to the scoreboard screen or to the feedback screen. Here, they have the option to quit or give your level another bash. Rewards for taking part and doing well are always nice. The Prize Giver Tweaker awards players a prize when activated, just like a prize bubble. Prize Givers don't need to be physically touched to be activated, which makes them all the more magical. To select which player gets what prize, open up the gadget's tweak menu. Why not select an object from your collection as a prize? Homemade gifts are always best and cheapest. The score giver tweaker will give your players their scores. You can set how much or little a score there is to offer, how it gives the score and whether or not the score is displayed for all and sundry to see. It's activated via its power input. In Little Big Planet Karting, we want you to choose your own on screen readouts, your HUD, as they call it, the heads up display. Choose what you want to see on your virtual dashboard. Lap counter, countdown timer, speedometer, stuff like that is all very useful, but who doesn't love loads of whatnots and thingamies to look at? A petrol gauge? A treasure counter? An ammo gauge? Health definer? Where is that cat with my bacon sandwich? Anything! Actually, not the cat bacon sandwich one. That was just me thinking aloud, you know, brainstorming. For example, a groundhog scaring counter. Stay with me, I haven't gone mad. You might have constructed a divine garden populated with exquisite petunias, but groundhogs, those animals that keep repeating themselves, are nibbling away at them. You could tune the roar of your cart's engine to scare the blighters off, but will you get them all? Set up a HUD counter to tell you how many you've scared off. The tools bag really is an emporium of awe and wonder. 
You can find tweaker gadgets for so many things in there, it's eerie. There's even a HUD tweaker. Did you know that? Look under world tweakers if you think I'm kidding. If you want to install a groundhog counter, you'll have need of a counter widget. Select one and you may place it wherever you wish. I've got one on my cat. Once you place the widget, you can open up its tweak menu and do what you please. Name it, change its colour, flip its orientation. Widget. I love that word. You'd call a wood pigeon widget. Widget the wood pigeon. So, what else can you do once a widget is in place? Well, you could select a HUD tweaker and place it on the player's spawn point. In the tweak menu, choose which HUD widget you want to display. Then go mad and choose your groundhog tweaker. Go for it! I suppose the next logical choice of action would be to hook up your HUD tweaker to this receiver. Why? Well, if you do, when you drive near the groundhogs, your counter will go up. You see, who'd have thought that would be a useful tool? Probably only me, but a useful tool nonetheless. Thank <laughs> you.